We are an office furniture manufacturer with seven manufacturing facilities throughout the U.S. and Canada. We make a lot of chairs and tables. Um, the product you're sitting in is exactly the same type of thing we make on a daily basis. If you walk into any office environment, um, from the walls to the trash cans to the furniture to the work surfaces, KI, one of the divisions, we make every single item inside of that office. If, if we look historically at sustainability, if you look at um, just in the U.S., the Native American population when they were here, they were as sustainable of a culture as we would hope to get to someday. If you looked at their animal usage, they, if they harvested an animal, they used every single piece of that animal, from its hide to its horns to its meat. Everything was used, nothing was wasted. There's two areas where we really concentrate our sustainability efforts. The ability of a company to reduce its materials incoming, the, the ability of the company to reuse those materials as many times as possible, and then recycle them at their end of life. The second portion that we really concentrate on is energy management. For a couple of reasons. One is our, en our energy consumption here is, is very large for a manufacturing facility. The other thing is it's a huge carbon footprint. I spend most of my time working with architects and designers um, and um, building awareness with them as to what we do and how we do it and trying to satisfy their needs as it relates to um, sustainable furniture uh, design and manufacturing. And for us as a company it's, it's um, you know, looking at things like the manufacturing process and removing solvent-based adhesives and solvent-based finishes out of the process so that ultimately the product, when they get it to the, the, the job site, whether it's in the corporate office or whether it's in a, a hospital environment or whether it's in an educational environment, that the product's not going to outgas. It's not going to be hazardous to the, you know, the health of the individuals occupying the space. So that's key. And the, the second piece of that that's vital is really understanding what the materials are. You know, there's a movement now underway to incorporate a greater percentage of recycle content. So using less virgin material and, and materials like the steel and the plastics that we use in the manufacturing process. So what we came up with um, is uh, essentially a waste sort um, or we call a, a dumpster dive. Um, we use this uh, procedure to determine um, what we have for in our waste stream um, coming out of the plant and um, how much of it, you know, to establish a baseline um, for our recycling operations uh, to try and pinpoint items that we can recycle or want to recycle. So what we'll do is, is we have a form that we fill out. We take a, just a complete dumpster from one of the cells and we'll dump it out. And then what we will do is we will sort each item out and weigh it um, to give us an overall weight of the, the dumpster itself, but then also of, of each individual item. Then once we have you know, what's left actually out of the garbage that is garbage, we can pinpoint these items you know, from an engineering standpoint and, and try to eliminate them from our waste stream. You know, instead of using these, these disposable towels that we throw away um, we, we have actually launderable towels in the back of the plant that maybe they can use instead of these so we don't have to throw them away. Number one, we don't have to buy them. Number two, the other launderable towels are already in use in the plant. We just need to utilize them in this area. And then we can work with our suppliers who send in the parts to us with this packaging that isn't recyclable and have them make changes on their end to make it a, a cardboard or, or a paper type of packaging and get away from the foam, which isn't environmentally friendly.